and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Wednesday, October 10th, 2018, and we are very, very excited to have Shannon Lay in the studio with us today. Shannon, take it away when you're ready. Thank you. The song's called Always Room. It's called The Moon's Detriment.
watching Audio Tree Live with Shannon Lay. Shannon, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course, and thank you for playing Always Room. Hell yeah. It's one of my favorites on the album. I mean, it's all so beautiful. <laughs> um, and uh, so I told you I really wanted to talk about this because every time we have a songwriter like in the studio, I'm as a songwriter, I'm always like, I have 100 questions. So getting started, just like when did you start and how did you start songwriting and what led you to it? Uh, That's a lot of questions in one, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I started playing guitar when I was 13, and I think I, I got my first laptop when I was, like, 16, mm -hmm. and that kind of started the, like, love affair with writing because I could record it. And yeah. It was, yeah, it was just a, a fun experience, like, having that, that at, at my disposal and just yeah. going wild. So did you say you got your first guitar at 13? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Okay, so did um, did guitar come first or did writing songs come first? Then you were like, oh, I could just sort of like start playing guitar with these. Guitar came first. Yeah. It was a lot of years of just learning songs and figuring out how my fingers worked. Do you remember stuff. what the first song you learned on guitar was? Um, you know, I think it might have been um, this Ben Queller song uh -huh. called Lizzie. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that was the first song I ever learned. And uh, Blackbird by the Beatles. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we all sort of, yeah. I, that was one of the first I ever learned. <laughs> and I have my, my first song that I ever learned is very embarrassing. It is Photographed by Nickelback. And that's a true story. Hey, it was, it was a style at the time, girl. It was a style at the time. Hot. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> and also it's three chords. You can just play it and you can sit in your bed and just be like, Dude. I know guitar now for yeah. sure. Yeah. Feel it out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first song you ever wrote? Um, oh my god. Not really. I I have this like paperweight of a, of an old computer, my first computer. Yeah. And like it, there's one song in there I can't remember what it's called, but it it's definitely got like a pack of bobby pins as like percussion, like uh -huh. shaking them up and like Oh, that's awesome. You, like, produced the songs, too, rather than just, like... I was producing, girl. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was mostly just bored. But, you know, I was constructive with it. You yeah. Know, figure it out. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. When I was first writing songs, I was just like, yeah, Nickelback is cool. I guess I'll write a three-chord song. <laughs> um, who were the people that you were sort of, like, looking to at the time? Do you remember? Um, I was in love with, like, Bob Dylan and... Bjork was huge for me in high mm -hmm. school and Velvet Underground and X and I just I liked music that was like emotional and genuine and yeah. just like felt good going in your ears you know I don't know it was just there was I was very drawn to like Motown and nice yeah just stuff that felt good like naturally uh-huh yeah as like a female singer songwriter did you ever go through a Joni Mitchell phase you know, I haven't. Yeah. But I, I love her music, but, I, but I've never hunkered down and, like, yeah. gotten into it. Yeah. Do, yeah. I, do people, I was going to, I wasn't going to ask you this, but it's just, do people come up to you all the time and you're like, they're like, you're like Joni Mitchell. Do you get that a I lot? I get that a lot. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I think people see a girl on a guitar and they're like. Oh, they got to put it somewhere where it feels good for yeah. them. Yeah. They're yes. like, who else do I know <laughs> that it has a guitar and is a girl? Joni Mitchell. Yeah. And I'm like. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'm Thanks excited to hear your next two songs. Awesome, cool. This is a new song. It's actually about. Uh, I wrote it for Nick Drake, and that's that's who I prefer to be compared to. For the future, for anyone who ever comes to my shows to tell me I'm the female Nick Drake, I'll be happy. Okay. <laughs>
song's called Recording 15. That song has like 17 million streams on Spotify. Yeah, it got on some playlists. Oh, uh, that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool. That's like a small country listening to you. Like, not a small country, like a pretty mid side, like pretty big country. That's pretty wild. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Especially because of how like vulnerable that song is. I know, people can relate. We've all been there. True. I was listening to it and I was like, yep. yeah, true. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of vulnerability, did you have to like, train do you think about like when you're on stage and you're singing your songs that are all like very much like hard on your sleeve like do you think about like these are strangers and they know my secrets now I, I always like just thinking that oh sorry could you turn your reverb power? oh yeah oh my god I forgot no, it's fine. um I always just like thinking that um they can relate yeah like I think that's the most powerful thing about music is you realize you're not alone and especially when you're writing it you're and you get so much response from it you're like mm -hmm. I'm really not alone this is great yeah and not only that but I'm helping other people who are going through 
this crazy stuff and yeah it's just like great. being a person is yeah hard it's therapy it's good yeah it's good I think that that's when you go wrong is when you when you think you're the only one feeling the way yeah. that you do you know yeah and it's like double therapy because it's therapy for you yeah and then it's therapy for them totally and it's it's like a win-win situation absolutely yeah did yeah. you have to like train yourself to do it or did it just come naturally to it, write it, like this it took a minute to get used to it I mm-hmm. guess like sometimes I get lost in the reality of the fact that people are just staring at me sing so it yeah. can be a little yeah. weird but I mean I've had so many amazing moments like I was I played this festival in Ohio called Nelsonville and this woman had just missed me play and she came up to me and she was just like oh I, I just went through this divorce and I've been listening to the moon's detriment and I was like come with me and we like just sat under a tree and I played it for her and she like cried and I was just like this is amazing like I I wouldn't give this up for the world I mean and it's it's exhausting and I give it till it's gone but then you know you go to sleep you wake up the next day do it all again yeah because that's I was actually talking to Brock earlier about this where it's like when you're performing and and you've just you've just done a whole lot of emotional stuff on stage and then you get off stage yeah and then you sort of have to do it again a little bit. Totally, yeah. Yeah, and how do you how do you deal with that? Like, are you a talker after shows, or are you? Does it depend on the night? Depends, yeah. yeah. But usually, yeah, yeah, I'm always down to talk. Yeah, because yeah. because your your songs open up a lot for other people to like come and chat with you. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah I do a lot of hugs, a lot mm-hmm. of just like. You know, commiserating, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's very fun. It is fun, because it's like, <laughs> you break down the wall of like, so uh, where are you from? Instead, it's like, I've had a bad day today, and I'm going to talk to you about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, it's like a, it's a cool experience. It is. It's like, it's a whole, like, you know, you could, you could go mosh at a show, or you could go cry at a show. Yeah. Like, either way, you're going to c- walk out feeling a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of moshing, so do you mosh, and no, just kidding, um... <laughs> No, <laughs> I cr- you just crowd surf at your own shows. I do want to do that one day. One day that would be so I funny. Sell out the Greek. Or yeah, something. you're like finger picking, and then you just fucking go for it. <laughs> That'd be great, I think. Um, but you are in another band called Feels. Yeah, yeah. Is there moshing involved with that band? Yeah, the cr- the crowd can do it all they want. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. just gonna stay on stage. Where yeah, it's safe. Yeah, but I love it. I love when the kids get crazy the kids get crazy <laughs> it's the best <laughs> um what's your role in that band uh, i sing and play guitar nice yeah how long has that band been uh going uh we've been feels for like three years and before that we were a bit uh six-piece band called raw geronimo mm-hmm. and then like as member oh, sorry as members left um we kind of transitioned into feels and we just finished our second record which should come out in february hell yeah which we're stoked about um uh, but yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited. This is it's been a slow year just because we've been working on the record. But yeah, I'm I'm really stoked on what we made. I think the kids are gonna love it. <laughs> um, does that sort of get out of like a different creative energy for you? Totally. Yeah. 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 It's much more extroverted. You know, uh-huh. I can like really let it out. Oh, that's so much fun. It's great. Yeah. I love you it. should do a bill that is you as Shannon Lay and then you in feels. Be amazing. And just see what's up. Yeah. See what that emotional roller coaster is like. Oh, bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> mosh in both. Yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna mosh next, listening to your next two songs. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you for I expect you playing to break them. an arm. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I have to say what they're called? The songs are called. You don't have to, but okay. you can. Then I'm not. Good. No, I'm just kidding. This uh, it's called all this life going down.
song is called Parked. Audio Tree Live with Shannon Lay. That was beautiful. Also, uh, people on the live chat are saying Nick Drake, definitely. Booyah. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, question What makes you decide electric versus acoustic when you're writing a song? Um, you know, I actually just recently got an acoustic. Mm -hmm. I didn't have one for the longest time. I, just, I hadn't found like the right mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And I found it, and now I pretty much write everything on it. I mm -hmm. love it. It's so good for finger picking. Yeah. And like when I travel, I just bring that and like do DI. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Yeah. So but, easy. <laughs> but, it, but this like this tour, I'm technically headlining. So I was like, oh, bring two guitars. Uh -huh. And then it's better. Yeah. 
Just variety. <laughs> variety. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Living Water, was that recorded with uh, an electric? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I do play that one electric live. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, the, the, is the, inti- the entire album is... Oh, uh, there's a couple acoustic on there. Oh, okay. The actual song, Living Water. Okay. That one's... Electric? Electric. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so speaking of your records, you released two in 2017, mm-hmm. right? And uh, one, All all This Life Going Down mm-hmm. and Living Water. Mm-hmm. And um, why two in one year? You know, uh, it just takes a long time to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first one I actually recorded in like 2015 or something. Okay. Took a long time. In the meantime, I made another record. So it yeah. just, just kind of worked out that way. I okay. I didn't mean to be like, I'm good at doing all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Plus, record, my, record. my first record was so low key. It was like my, my one of my good friends released it, and mm-hmm. it was very like I think no, a, a co- no copies left the Los Angeles mm-hmm. area. Yeah. So, but yeah, Living Water is a little more broad. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. So th- on Living Water, those those songs were recorded or written in like a relatively short period of time. Pretty short, yeah. Yeah. How, how did so? How did you? Uh, that's. Okay, I'm going to try and find a way to phrase this question. Get because on your first album, those were songs were like written over the course of a few years, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. 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 What is that? How do you sit down and just are like, I'm going to write an album? I suppose that's my question. It's like, yeah. how do you write so many songs in a short period of time? I think, you know, I, I think it's Neil Young who talks about the muse a lot. Mm-hmm. And it, that's basically like the creative energy that's that's flowing through you all the time Mm -hmm. but it's you're not always tapped into it and i think when you're feeling it you do it you just gotta do it and you can't be mad at yourself you can't i can't like set aside a day and be like i'm gonna write today because sometimes i won't feel like doing Mm -hmm. that at all um but yeah i think you just have to pay attention and like i'll have moments where i'll like just be driving have to like pull over to like record something or like you just always have to be like aware that it's yeah around you and like it's going to get you yeah. at least expect it. But yeah. Cause I feel like there are some people who are like, if I just sit down and write every single day, right. Something will come out of that. That's not my style. Yeah. That's not my style. Yeah. I need, I need like 40% waste all of my time. 60%. Yeah. <laughs> do productive things. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like on the one hand, it's like, yeah, I could sit down and write every day, but if I'm sitting down in like six days out of seven in a week, it's shitty. I'm going to be so discouraged. Right. I mean, that's good too though. Cause it's I, good. I think you do have to like sift through the dirt to find the uh-huh. diamonds, you know, you got to get all the bad stuff out and then something good will come. But mm-hmm. I always just listen. And, and if, if I'm feeling it and I'm able to do it, you sit down and do yeah. it. How do you know? Cause is it like a feeling? In you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, when I'm at home, I'm usually holding a guitar and it'll just like, usually Happen. it's like something someone says mm-hmm. or a certain chord or something and it just like explodes from there. Yeah. Like on my first record, a lot of those songs were just like, I hit record and I played the song and that was what the song was. Like there was something that's awesome electric about that time. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it's still like that sometimes, but I've definitely gotten more into like, reworking things and being like no this could be a little bit better like, yeah let's tweak that yeah. yeah like editing yeah yeah huh. editing bro yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh two of the, uh, the next song you're gonna play the last song unfortunately and one of the other songs is uh for from an upcoming record right yes nice i just finished my third record i'm very excited nice i'm yes. very excited too yeah. do you have like a like a general release time area um i'm not sure yet yeah yeah we'll see i i'm hoping it'll come out next year it'll probably be later next year mm-hmm. but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll trickle it out oh yeah. yeah i'm very excited <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. This you can great. come back anytime. Yeah. I speak for everyone. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> you can have an audio tree residency. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this song's called The Dream, and it's just about how life feels like a dream. Oh, wait. Can I tune? Yeah. Is that rude? It's so rude. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're good. Okay, hold on. Let me get my snork. Get that one guys. the mark. Are you good at tuning talk? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Oh, just like when you're on stage, do you are oh, you good at like chatting with the audience while you're tuning? Uh, you know, I try not to tune when oh. on stage because I usually don't like to talk to the audience. Ever? Uh, only if I'm in the mood. If okay. I'm in the mood, you're in for a treat. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not, then I won't. <laughs> gotcha. 
I was going to ask, because, like, with songwriter sets, sometimes, like, I feel like I have to talk to the audience, but I... I like a little comic relief, because it's, yeah. it's a heavy yeah. mood, and I, th I think... My, my friend Meg Duffy, she's in Hand Habits. Love Hand Habits. She's really good at it. Like, yeah. She'll be tuning, and she has this kind of, like, monotone thing going on, but mm -hmm. she just cracks me up. Yeah. I love her. <laughs> Gotta tap into that muse, too. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Oh, wait. Speaking of muse, mm -hmm. how, how, do, how do cats get the news? Or, no, 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 I ruined it. How do cats get their information? <laughs> how? The muse. There you go. You get it? It's like, okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody's gone now. No, they're still here. We, did we break the internet? <laughs> did we broke over? it. You're right. <laughs> If you are in Chicago, go see her tonight at the Empty Bottle. And if you are not in Chicago, make sure to go pick up her latest record and her other record that also came out recently, All This Life Going Down and Up. Uh, is right? Living Water was the yes, most Yes, Living recent. Water is the most recent. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, off of Woodsist Records. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. so great. Uh, thank you the Cameron Lighting Crew, and thank you to everyone in the studio yeah. for making this happen. Uh, see you later. Bye. See ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?